what you're looking at here is a 30-year-old man condemned to die in prison after receiving two life sentences without parole for building a website with PHP. Ross Ulbrich is the world's most notorious web developer. He was feared by many as Dread Pirate Roberts on the dark web and famous for building the Silk Road 1.0, a global marketplace kind of like Amazon where you can buy and sell goods with the main difference being that you don't have to follow any laws and you can do it anonymously. Not following the law is a good way to make a lot of money, but you take on the added risk of going to prison. And Ross Ulbrich saw the downside of that risk when the FBI seized the Silk Road in 2013 and put him in jail for life. But despite Donald Trump saying that drug dealers should get the death penalty, he gave Ross Ulbrich a full unconditional pardon yesterday. In today's video, we'll look at the crazy story and interesting technical details behind the Silk Road. It is January 22nd, 2025, and you're watching The Code Report. Before we get into the Silk Road story, we first need to get one thing perfectly clear. Drugs are bad. You shouldn't do drugs. Uh, if you do them, you're bad. Because drugs are bad, okay? Because it followed no laws and did all transactions anonymously through Bitcoin, people used it primarily as a marketplace to trade mind-altering substances. Ulbrich was an advocate for individual liberty and a true enemy of the state who not only operated for profit, but to send a message. But the website did prohibit items that caused harm, like weapons of mass destruction or things that would harm children. The website launched in February 2011. Then a few months later in June, Gawker published an article about the site, which dramatically increased its traffic, but also drew the attention of law enforcement. Throughout its two and a half years of operation, over 100,000 buyers participated, generating $183 million in sales volume, with $13 million of that being commissions going to Ulbrich, all conducted in this relatively unknown cryptocurrency called Bitcoin, which was valued at about $10 per coin at the time. Things were going great, but there was all kinds of drama going on behind the scenes, and there were even allegations that Dread Pirate Roberts tried to hire hitmen to take care of his enemies, although Ulbrich was never convicted of these alleged crimes. When you look into it, the story is very complicated, and it looks more like an FBI informant tried to set him up, and one of the feds on the Silk Road case even went to prison for corruption. The bigger problem is that he was making a bunch of operational security mistakes that allowed law enforcement to find him. To understand these mistakes, you first need to know how to operate an illicit website on the dark web. The Silk Road website itself was nothing special, and is believed to use the LAMP stack, which includes PHP and MySQL, with a web server like Apache running on Linux. Now normally to host a website, you point a URL to an IP address, but that's not going to work if you want your service to be anonymous and untraceable. And that's where the Tor browser and and Onion services come in. The Silk Road could only be viewed in the Tor browser, because it was hosted via Onion services and only accessible through the Tor network distinguished by a .onion domain, which provides an overlay network on top of TCP IP to hide the service's location and provide end-to-end -end encryption and authentication. Communication between the client and server is broken up between relays in the network, making it virtually impossible to know the identity and location of the client or server. If your website needs this feature, you can easily accomplish this by installing the Tor package on your server, then create a Tor config file that points to your service. Restart Tor, and that'll automatically generate your Onion address. And now you can access your website on the Tor network anonymously. But pretty cool, and Ross would have gotten away with it if he were a little more careful. Like in the early days of the Silk Road, he accidentally used his real name in an online forum post promoting the site, and he even used Stack Overflow just like the rest of us. He also reused the username Altoid, which was eventually tied to his Gmail account. In addition, Bitcoin itself is a public ledger by design, and only pseudo-anonymous. That's why modern criminals and privacy advocates prefer coins like Monero. But the silliest mistake is that the real IP address for the server was accidentally leaked in the website's CAPTCHA. That led the feds to a server in Reykjavik, Iceland, but some developers find this highly sus because there's really no error that could leak an IP address in a CAPTCHA. And the conspiracy theory is that the FBI used some secret high-tech tool that they don't want anybody to know about. But at this point, they had enough evidence and arrested him on October 1st, 2013 at a public library in San Francisco. They distracted him and were able to arrest him without him closing the laptop while he was logged in to the Silk Road's admin panel. And get this, they found a wallet with 144,000 bitcoins on that laptop. At the time, that was only worth a measly $28 million, but at today's prices would be worth $14 billion. At this point, the feds had a slam dunk case, and eventually he received two life sentences without the possibility of parole. Now, not many people argue that what he did was good and he shouldn't go to prison, but many people argue that his punishment was too harsh. Murderers and violent criminals often get far lighter sentences, and Trump chose to pardon him because he believes he was unfairly burned at the stake, not for causing harm, but for being a heretic to the deep state. It's a highly controversial pardon, and people have mixed feelings, but one thing's for sure, the Joe Rogan-Ross Ulbrich interview is going to be an absolute banger. This has been The Code Report, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.